Okay, this time we're going to look at Thevenin's theorem, but we're going to look at it at a circuit whenever we have a dependent source included. So how does Thevenin's theorem work for this particular example, where I've got a current controlled current source, a dependent source in the circuit controlled by that current I1? How do we apply Thevenin's theorem? Well, let's go through and let's do first the Thevenin equivalent voltage calculation. So for my VTH calculation, once again, I need to find the open circuit voltage between the A and B nodes. And really, this is fundamentally no different than what I did before. I'm just going to ground the B node because that's convenient for me, which now defines this node as VOC. And now let's just go through and calculate the open circuit voltage. All right. So in this case, looking at this, I've got a node here, V1. I've got a node here, V2. And this must be 8 volts. That node is defined. So I can now go through, write my KCL equations. In this case, I'm just going to stick with the I1 definition. There's no point in trying to do that any differently. I'll choose a current this direction through this resistor, this direction through this resistor. And once again, since I'm already defining VOC across this resistor here, I'm just going to pick that current. There's no point in fighting it. I'll go with the polarity that's already established. So in this case, I go through and write my KCL equations. So for my V1, I've got 8 minus V1 over 10 plus 2 going in must be equal to V1 minus V2 over 5. For my V2 node, I've got V1 minus V2 over 5 going in is equal to 0 0.5 I1 going out plus V2 minus VOC over 6. And then my VOC node. Again, this is a non-essential node, but I need to know VOC, so I'm going to include a KCL equation for it. So V2 minus VOC over 6 must be equal to VOC over 4. I still don't have enough equations to solve my circuit. I've got V1, V2, VOC, and I1. What did I forget? My dependent source variable, I1, can't forget that. So my dependent source variable is that I1 must be equal to 8 minus V1 over 10. Now I can solve. And if I do that, what I will get is that VOC will be equal to 3.6 volts and therefore VTH is equal to 3.6 volts. So the Thevenin equivalent voltage, I did this no differently than I did before. Having the dependent source in there didn't change anything beyond the fact I had to include my dependent source variable. But there's no real trick to this at all. But what about the RTH calculation? Okay. So for my RTH calculation, I'm now going to zero out my independent sources. Okay, let's redraw my circuit. 
Okay, now I need to find the equivalent resistance between nodes A and B. How do I do that? Well, I can show you, I can tell you one way that many students will do it, which is unfortunately completely incorrect. They will look at that dependent current source and they'll just ignore it. They'll add the resistors together and then they'll have 10 plus 5 plus 6 is 21 in parallel with 4 and then they'll write that down and it's completely wrong because you cannot ignore the effect of that dependent source. It will absolutely affect the equivalent resistance between those two nodes. So clearly, resistor reduction isn't going to work. How do we find REQ? We need a different technique. We just can't reduce the resistors and combine them together. That technique is called source driving or source excitation. So the source driving or source excitation technique can find the equivalent Thevenin resistance for any circuit. And the idea is pretty straightforward. We're going to start with our linear circuit with all of the independent sources set to zero, which we just did. And then we have our terminals A and B. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect an external source between A and B to drive this circuit. Now that external source can either be a voltage source or a current source. It doesn't matter. There's going to be a voltage VT and a current IT associated with this source. And it's very important. I want to point out, note the polarity. This is not the passive sign convention. The current's flowing out. Once again, don't try to apply what is true for resistors in terms of passive sign convention to a source. In this case, this source is driving that circuit. Positive current will flow out of it. So, just want to point this out. Note IT versus VT polarity. Not pass the sign convention. That's a real common mistake that people will make whenever they work problems like this. Okay, so this is a source, and what you're going to do is you're going to either set VT or set IT and then solve for the other. Choose a value for VT. In other words, make it into a voltage source and solve for IT or choose a value for VT, I mean, pardon me, for IT, for a current source, and solve for VT. So you're going to do one or the other. You pick one, calculate the other. Which source you choose is your own. Once you do that, then RTH will be equal to 
vt divided by it. OK, so we can choose a value for vt or it. It can be any constant value you want, except 0. What are convenient values to use? Mathematically simple values to use. So good choices. And what most people will do is set IT equal 1 amp or VT equal 1 volt. I can use any number I want. Let's just, why not use 1 amp or 1 volt? That just makes the math a little bit easier. And so typically that's what people will do. So let's go and let's apply source driving to this circuit. OK. I'm going to apply in this case a 1 amp source. So I'm going to choose IT. And the reason why I normally like to use a current source is that way, once you have VT, then RTH is just the magnitude of VT. It's the same value. So in this case, I've got my IT is 1 amp, which means I need to calculate VT across that source. At this point, I can use any technique I want. Once again, I'm going to ground this. If this is VT across the source, then by inspection, if I'm grounding the B node, then the A node is just equal to VT, nodal definition. And the other side, I'm going to call this V1 at that node. These two are just going to sum together in series, so I don't need to actually write the voltage for that node. It's not essential. Now let's go through and let's pick our current directions. So in this case, since the I1 is already in this direction, it's flowing from both resistors, I'm just going to pick the voltage across those two. I will pick this voltage in this current direction for the 6 ohm resistor. And VT is already defined across the 4 ohm resistor, so I'm just going to pick the current direction and not fight that. I'm just going to go with the polarity that's already there. So in this case, this polarity was set by I1. This current direction was set by VT. Never try to go against a voltage or a current that's already defined in the circuit. Make it easy on yourself. OK? And in this case, what I'm going to get is for my V1 node, I'll have 0. Note that the ground goes all the way around, so that's 0 volts. So 0 minus V1 over 15 must be equal to 0 0.5 I1 plus V1 minus VT over 6. So that's for my V1 node. For my VT node, I've got V1 minus VT over 6. plus 1 amp going in must be equal to VT over 4. Now I still need the dependent source variable. I've got to define my I1 term. And so in this case, 0 minus V1 over 15 is equal to I1. And now I can solve, and if I solve for these, put those into Mathematica, what I'm going to get is that VT is equal to 6.4 volts. And therefore, RTH is equal to VT divided by IT, except IT was just 1 amp. So it's just equal to VT divided by 1 amp is equal to 6.4 ohms. And there is my Thevenin equivalent resistance. So you can see why I like to use current sources. 
Once you calculate VT, then all you do is change the units, and there's your RTH value. So for my original circuit, I wind up with this. There's my Thevenin equivalent of that circuit. So in this case, I solved it. I had a dependent source. I applied source driving, and that let me, found, let, let me find the value of, of the Thevenin equivalent resistance. OK, now I want to point out that source driving works for any circuit. And let me work an example to illustrate this. Let's do one more problem here. Source driving works for any circuit with or without dependent sources. Let's test that out. Let's work on an interesting little problem here. And this is a good problem to work because I'm also going to show you a couple of extra nodal analysis tricks with this. Let's find the Thevenin equivalent for this circuit. So let's first go and let's calculate VOC. So to find VTH, I'm first going to find the open circuit voltage. And in this case, I'm once again going to ground the bottom B node here on the bottom, which means this becomes VOC. Now we note here, I've got an undefined node voltage on both sides. That's a super node. This time I'm going to work this with a super node. So I've actually got a super node that links that node and that node together. Now you know you're going to have to do a constraint equation for that voltage source. And so what you could do is you could define some voltage on the other side of this node, define a voltage variable on this side, and then simply say this voltage minus this voltage is 6 volts. You could do that. Let me show you a little shortcut. Notice over here, for this voltage source, I write the constraint directly here and I define that voltage. So the constraint equation is right there on the schematic. I don't need to say 10 minus 0 is equal to 10. Well, if I can do that over here, Let's do it here. I'm going to call that voltage V1. If that voltage is V1, then I'm going to call the voltage at this node V1 plus 6 volts. V1 added to 6, so that's just V1 plus 6. I could give it a variable name, but why? Why do I need to? Let's simply go ahead and use it as is. And let's use this as the variable instead. So now let's go through, pick our current directions for our resistors. And now I can go and write my KCL equations. 
And so for my super node, I know that V1 minus 10 over 35 plus V1 plus 6 minus VOC divided by 15 going out must be equal to 3 amps coming in. For my VT node, okay, pardon me, excuse me, my VOC node, pardon me, I get V1 plus 6 minus VOC divided by 15 is equal to VOC over 50. Two equations, two unknowns. I can now plug this in and solve. And what I will get is that V1 is equal to 72.65 volts. And VOC is equal to 60.5 volts, which therefore is equal to my Thevenin and equivalent voltage. And there you go. So all I did here was just apply the super node write the constraint for the voltage source right there on the circuit just by calling that node V1 plus 6. So it's a nice little shortcut. You don't have to do this, but as you become more skilled in nodal analysis, you start to learn how to do these little tricks. Okay? So that's my VTH calculation. What about RTH? What about my Thevenin equivalent resistance? Okay? Take my original circuit, zero out the sources. Okay, I want to find the equivalent resistance between A and B. Now you could look at that and say, well, Dr. Holman, that's kind of straightforward. 35 plus 15 in series is 50, and then 50 in parallel with 50 is just 25 ohms. So the equivalent resistance is just 35 plus 15 in parallel with 50 is equal to 25 ohms. And that's my equivalent resistance, and you're absolutely correct. But you know, some people have a lot of trouble taking resistor networks and reducing them. And some of those people find it actually much easier to work a problem nodally. So like I said, source driving always works. Let's apply source driving to the circuit. Let's instead add a voltage source instead of a current source. And let's make it a one volt source, which means now I want to calculate IT. And so in this case, I'm once again going to ground this node on the bottom. If I'm grounding this, then that must be one volt because of the voltage source. Okay? Well, if that's the case, let's go through and I'm going to define my currents like so. And in this case, IT must be equal to 1 over 50 plus 1 over 35 plus 15. I just wrote the KCL for that node. It's a defined node, so I'm calculating the current through the voltage source, right? Which is what you can do when you have a defined node. I write that KCL equation, and what I get is that IT will therefore be equal to 0.04 amps. And therefore, RTH, the Thevenin equivalent resistance, will be equal to VT over IT is equal to 1 over 0.04 is equal to 25 ohms. And as you might expect, you get exactly the same answer. So source driving works every single time. And exactly 
as I showed here, if you are not comfortable doing resistor reduction, then do the nodal analysis. And by the way, I could have done this with a one amp source too and still gotten the same answer. Okay, now, when you are working these types of nodal analysis problems, okay, keep in mind, it can be a voltage or a current source, it can be any value, but the one volt or the one amp are typically the values people find convenient. And once again, make sure that the current's flowing out of the positive side. This is not the passive sign convention. It's not a resistor. So be careful with that. One thing I should also mention, if you look in the textbook, in fact, if you look in a lot of textbooks that talk about Thevenin and equivalent circuits and how to find Thevenin and equivalent, there are actually several different techniques that books will talk about. There are different ways you can use, but the technique I've shown you here with the open circuit voltage and with the source driving technique will always work with every circuit. Some of the techniques you see will not work with every possible linear circuit. Some, some of the methods for finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit. But this methodology, VOC for VTH and then source driving for RTH, will always work in every single case for any problem you can work. So you'll find other techniques mentioned and discussed in the book, but I'm focusing strictly on the one technique that I know will always work no matter what problem I give you. All right, so focus on this technique. If you can do this technique, VOC and then source driving, then you can solve any problem you're going to encounter on an exam, okay? Next time we'll look and work a couple of more examples of Thevenin's theorem. And then we'll look at kind of a parallel to Thevenin's theorem, which is Norton's theorem and what a Norton equivalent circuit is. And as we're going to see, a Norton equivalent circuit is actually a very simple thing. We'll look at that next time.